What is up guys, welcome back to today's video where we will be experimenting with the Salvation Grip and Region Clear mod and seeing just how viable of a setup it is when entering in game. The Salvation Grip when it was first released as a stasis weapon was an odd but interesting weapon that could be used in a number of ways. It's a heavy weapon by nature but acts more like a support item that enhances your stasis abilities further through fragment choices. Because of its design and function, a lot of players didn't make much out of it and kind of left it on the side for something more powerful. Come Seasonal Splicer, that has a lot of mods catered to grenade launchers, grenade launcher uses has drastically increased across the board in PvE content, especially with the introduction to Breach and Clear. And yet out of this, I haven't seen one person actually go ahead and try out the weapon with Breach and Clear and see if it's viable or not considering the effects that Stasis has on the target. And that's what today's video will be looking into, just how viable the two are and if you can make an effective build with them. We are going to build upon an already familiar build that is used for endgame nightfalls and incorporate the two into the build for better synergy. On top of that, because of our use of stasis will be extensive, mod choices won't be tied down to how the build comes out, so lots of opportunity will be available for you to experiment with. Basically, we're going to be creating a supportive build. Will this be a new endgame build for the toughest contest in game? Probably not, but it will allow a consistent source of damage from you and your team when the debuff and stasis kicks in. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Shade Binder for its effects with Salvation Grip when combined with the aspects and fragments. For this area, we will be using an already popular template that will provide us with the best method of getting the most out of stasis targets via Bleak Watchers. Utilising the Bleak Watcher and Ice Flare Bolt combo, we can use our turrets to slow down and freeze targets which will allow us to do more increased area damage in the mean run while also providing the user the opportunity to debuff a ultra enemy while still under stasis effect. Very strong for Grandmaster content, raid and generally any content in game as it will give you both the damage and control you'll need for this specific game mode. However, as we aren't planning to use Grandmasters for this setup anytime soon, it will be used for the most common core game modes and difficulties such as Normal, Legend and Master Tier. Because of how strong Bleak Watchers are and how the fragments chosen will affect Salvation's grip as well, you will need to think about how it will benefit you but also how it will affect the weapon's performance out on the field as you want the best perk to support you throughout. A prime example of this is the following that I've chosen. I want to focus on a constant ability regeneration for more grenades and extra damage and the best way through this is to apply the following fragments. Since grenades will be a needed source for producing turrets, I will need Whispers of Shards and Torments available to help keep this ability to float, although I'll be using Verity's Brow to further improve this area as well. After that, I will want damage to also be made available for both weapon and inflicted stasis enemies. For this, Whispers of Fissures will apply extra damage to those who are shattered by stasis or near a stasis shard once it becomes destroyed, and then Whisper of Rending will provide a 43% kinetic weapon damage boost to those affected by stasis alone. As I have a grenade launcher with flashbang attached, that 43% boost will help the perk do a bit more damage on direct hits. When looking at the subclass, everything here will benefit both the turret and salvation when in action, which is important if you wish for both areas to succeed. To make the most out of salvation, you have to understand that the weapon isn't a great damage supplier on its own, and it requires a good sense of thought as to what fragments will cover you in both areas. All fragments chosen will help you achieve that goal and more once mods are applied, but you have to get into the mindset first with how the weapon works and how you can use its effects for not only a supportive role but also a damage dealing role as well, which I will show later. Effectively with the setup, you'll end up playing a supportive role for you and your team as a whole. Now for the weapons, I've aimed to build around suppression, debuff and supportive role, which will all fit well into endgame content. For this, going with weapons that fit the role as well will allow you to cement yourself further into the quality of the build and let everyone around you know that. My primary for example is the Ignition Kill with Flashbang Grenade, Quick Draw and Fresh and I plan on using this to shatter my stasis crystals created by Salvation or by my turrets or super etc. As the Warlock lacks a shatter method, having a grenade launcher spare will always be helpful in the long run. 
Alongside that, I also plan to use the weapon to blind enemies and create enough breathing room possible for me and my team to go in and prep ourselves against the Hall of Uncommon Enemies. This is useful as it fits within the core of the build as a crowd controller, but also its effects against champions will allow us to separate the minor and major enemies and focus on the singular target at all times. Attaching the Unstoppable Grenade Launcher mod against Unstoppables will drastically make them easier to take out, and then on top of that, having the Breach and Clear mod attached as well will debuff the enemies by an extra 35%, and if frozen, Whisper of Rending can also apply the 43% boost to kinetic damage. In short, this weapon will be doing the most damage out of all weapons combined. For secondary, I'm using the original Confluence with Rewind Rounds and Firefly, and this will help me to constantly produce grenade energy via the Rarity Brawl Exotic trait. As I wanted to try something different for once, I chose a weapon that I could make use of the Firefly or Dragfly perk for destroying Stasis Shards in close quarters when I can't rely on my grenade launcher at all times. The role I have grants me the option well, with its very balanced stats, but it also comes with Rewind Rounds, which is a DPS increase if when we land all of our shots. All of this in a single weapon makes it a great entry for the build when you want to take out targets from long distance, but also want to put in the damage since you're getting the DPS bump, and Firefly is generally stronger than Dragonfly for both damage and AoE afflicted. This area can be changed to something else if you don't have the weapon, such as Gian 7, Stars and Shadow, Arsenic Bite, or Shadow Price, or that can drop Firefly as a roll. For Heavy, we have the Salvation Grip Exotic, and the point of this weapon is to inflict stasis, debuff, and support our main class of abilities via shards created. I tend to use this weapon to slow down enemies and then finish with my grenade launcher, or use it directly on a boss to inflict the Breach and Clear debuff, and then shoot them some more with the stasis effect so that they go ahead and do a boss stomp, and inflict even more damage around them. Surprisingly, this method is actually very effective against many bosses, as it has a high flinch application when stasis shards are destroyed. With this in mind, I can inflict both more damage via the weapon alone, and flinch them to absolute hell, to the point of my team being able to move in and DPS dump said enemy easily. It's very effective, but only effective because of Breach and Clear I have found. Stasis on its own is good, but with Breach and Clear attached, it becomes even better. For the stats section, we don't actually need to invest in a lot since we have the core abilities covered via the status subclass and variety's Brow Exotic perk. Thanks to the subclass and some of the fragment benefits, we don't need to go ahead and spec into using Charge with Light or Elemental Well mods just to make up the difference since everything else here is there to support. Our most usable ability here will be Discipline, which we have it at 70. The only mod that will be making a difference to this area will be Innovation mod, which will all be linked back into our use of Masterwork weapons. But except from that, Grenade Regeneration will be produced via Variety's Brow and the Whispers of Shards and Torments fragments. After that, we do have our Intellect stat at 70 as well, but this will only be supported by the Fresh perk on my Grenade Launcher and that's it. Because of how easily covered the build already is, you have free reign for what you would like to do next for mod coverage. Elemental Wells, Charge with Light, or Warman Cells are all on the table and what you pick from there won't interfere too much for the build. As I wanted to support my team through the best methods available, I focused on the most simplest option there, which was adding in the Protective Light mod for better survival. This one mod will allow me to survive a bit longer when at critical and this seems the best fit for the build if I wish to support my team longer by soaking in more damage. Alternatively, we could always go with Warman Cells and use the Void mod for debuff and suppression of applications. The choice for the section is truly yours to pick and choose. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for for the overall role of the build. For Head, we have Discipline, Grenade Launcher and Refinder, and Charge with Light mod. Arm, we have Binding Discipline, Unstoppable Grenade Launcher, and Anti Barrier Scout Rifle mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Kakas of Damage Times 2, and Protective Light mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Invigoration, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, and Supercharged mod. Bond, we have Minor Discipline, and Breach and Clear mod. As an endgame build, we now have a build that is capable of supporting you and your team through constant pressure and controlling the field to your advantage. From a group of minor enemies to an endgame nightfall boss, this build is key for nuking areas quickly and efficiently for all. How this plays out of course will be down to the user and the environment they are in, as against very high end content such as Grand Masters, 
This build in terms of weapons and mods used won't make it very far unless you change up a few of the core items shown. The core of the build though will work for such content since that's where it specialises in the most. Now turning things down a notch and using the build in masters and below has shown the build to be quite effective as I imagined. Using the turrets when coming across a huddle has proven time and time again to be helpful for dispatching the toughest enemies and then the minor enemies that follow suit. When we add in the debuff applications our kinetic grenade launcher has from Whisper's Rending and Breach and Clear, against any champions or bosses we will be constantly doing extra damage against said enemies. Considering how easy it is for us to get our grenades back to create turrets, means we won't be lacking in damage departments just because we don't have an effective heavy weapon available. As long as we get energy kills that will stack their foes and give us grenade energy, we should be fine for controlling areas easily without the need of teammates if need be. Now talking about salvation, I found that the weapon is quite effective not only as an ultra and a champion killer, but also a monster flincher when up against bosses. Through some testing of this week's Nightfall and the Moon Nightmare Hunt, I want to see just how powerful the Breach and Clear mod attached tree is and surprisingly it's quite effective. Without the Breach and Clear mod, my damage around crits were hitting roughly around 1k to max of 4k and then the additional stasis damage from Whispers of Fishers came to around the same, which is good damage but only if the stasis shards around the targets are destroyed. With the mod however, we were hitting around 2k to 5k consistently, all coming up as critical hits. With the mod however, we were hitting around 2k to 5k consistently, all coming up as critical hits. At the same time, the boss was also being stun locked and couldn't move about so much, so I could apply the debuff over and over again, and as long as my glacier wall was near the target, it would auto destroy and cause even more damage than shown, as you can currently see for the gameplay. Now, what you need to understand with this is that applying this one mod to the weapon not only makes the weapon viable for damage phases, but also allows us easier method of building up ability energy when you need it most. If I need to stop a few enemies from attacking me so much, but I don't have the energy to do so via my turrets, using the heavy near the boss or generally anywhere and then getting them destroyed will greatly get you the energy that you need. And this will feed back in a positive way back into the builds and abilities and such. I personally believe this build can be a great contender for debuffer builds as long as you keep your turrets up and going and use your heavy against bosses or ultras as you keep feeding back into your abilities and keep pressure up over and over again. It doesn't overtake what Arnaki is capable of doing as you need to constantly apply pressure to get the most out of salvation, but I truly believe salvation with breach and clear is actually slept on with how good stasis is when applied with breach and clear. This is a build that I would wholeheartedly recommend you give a try on as it's fun, very effective and outright great for becoming a master of the field. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall lore content if you do that type of stuff link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.